budget pressures have taken a heavy toll on the British Army. Threatening the UK's ability to be a serious partner on NATO's eastern border and potentially undermining its leadership role in the alliance. The army has been relegated compared to the other branches of the UK military, even as Russia's increasingly aggressive behavior has emphasized the importance of land warfare capabilities. That downgrading must be reversed, the army requires increased resources to replenish its ammunition, replace kits sent to Ukraine, modernize equipment and boost recruitment. The army has already played a crucial role in NATO's response to Russian bellicosity. The UK has served as the framework state, or leader, for the multinational battle group in Estonia since the 2016 summit decision to forward deploy personnel and equipment along NATO's eastern flank. This was a significant intensification of NATO's defensive capabilities. Although the UK had already been pushing back against Russian aggression by providing support to NATO partners Georgia and Ukraine, the UK has served as the leader for the multinational battle group in Estonia since the 2016 summit decision to forward deploy personnel and equipment along NATO's eastern flank. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 led the alliance to increase its military presence in Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. For the UK, this meant deploying an additional temporary second battle group to Estonia from January to December 2022. In addition to the increase in personnel, the UK sent air defence systems and helicopters that remain in the country. These changes have been welcomed by the Estonian government and mark the UK out as one of eight framework nations taking on increased responsibilities for NATO readiness along its eastern flank. Now this leadership role is in question. Despite increasing the defence budget since 2022, the UK has fallen behind other NATO member states that also increased spending over this period. At least 23 out of 32 NATO member states will meet or exceed the alliance's defense spending goal of 2% of gross domestic product GDP in 2024. That is good news for NATO's ability to better deter Russia and to continue to support Ukraine. However, for the UK, this means that it is no longer a standout performer. In 2021, Defence spending of 2.29% of its GDP made it the fourth highest spender compared to the size of its economy in NATO. In 2024, it has fallen to ninth place, spending 2.33%. While all three branches of the military play a vital role in NATO, it is the army that takes a lead role for the so-called enhanced forward presence, a key part of the strategy for countering the Russian threat. Yet the British Army has had to accept large personnel cuts in recent years, which could weaken the UK's role in NATO and its importance on the eastern flank. A shrinking army risks the UK's ability to fulfill its roles within the alliance. Boosting spending on recruitment, retention and upgrading capabilities is essential to maintaining a leadership role. For the British Army, the relevant question is whether it can contribute to a NATO land force that is sufficient to blunt Russian offensive operations against NATO territory. The refrain of the Ministry of Defence when gaps are highlighted in UK capability is that NATO is an alliance, so the gaps in one member's capabilities are bought out by the whole. The relevant question, however, is not whether the UK can match Russian ground forces, but whether it can fulfil its own commitments within the NATO plan. In the land domain, there is currently an expanding gap between the UK's stated commitments and its capacity to deliver against them. The increase in Russian grey zone actions since the war in Georgia in 2008 has shown that Russia does not limit itself to conventional war fighting. Moscow has also been active in the hybrid domain. Conducting deniable acts of sabotage on NATO member states' territory, particularly in countries where multinational battle groups are stationed, as well as in the Baltic Sea. This provides the UK government with a possible way forward. By investing more in the army's ability to analyze, deter and counter hybrid threats, the UK will remain an important NATO partner and improve its own resilience. This is an area where the army could build on investments made in recent years. However, the focus should shift from expecting cyber capabilities to replace some traditional functions towards better integrating conventional and newer cyber and information warfare capabilities. Hybrid threats will only continue to grow in importance, and the UK so far has not invested enough to in its abilities to deter and counter them. This will need to go hand in hand with increasing investment in the service responsible for defence on land a crucial objective for NATO's eastern flank that will endure.
The UK must improve its ability to recruit and retain troops. This will require, among other things, expensive investments in soldiers' housing to improve standards. The Army also requires a range of equipment updates, including to its fleet of armoured vehicles. The ongoing war in Ukraine has also shown the need to invest in drones and theatre air defence systems. The UK must improve its ability to recruit and retain troops. This will require, among other things, expensive investments in soldiers' housing to improve standards. Investing in additional equipment will also include taking a closer look at industrial policy in the UK and ensuring that UK industry is able to keep pace with the demands of the defence environment. Recent news about the potential downgrading of the furnace at Port Talbot Steelworks would have implications for the UK's domestic steel production. This could have a knock-on effect on the reliability of defence supply chains and might require the UK to import steel from abroad. The UK's close working relationship with the Estonian government provides a good basis to increase its understanding of hybrid threats and to learn how to deter and counter them. This will include focusing on skills that have not traditionally been part of the land domain. Pre-empting and countering disinformation, deterring cyber attacks and protecting infrastructure from sabotage. These skills and capabilities are important on NATO's eastern flank. But all are lessons that should be applied to the UK domestically as well. There is much the UK government can learn from Estonia and other newer NATO allies that have invested in improving their societal resilience. The army can play a significant role in learning these lessons and applying them in the UK. To do so, the new UK government should understand the army's integral importance to UK and European defence and prioritize its needs accordingly.